Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. This is episode number 50 and I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for everybody who's been listening over this past year. We launched on the 1st of December last year and it's been a fantastic journey. I've enjoyed interviewing some brilliant, brilliant people, sharing their stories and and sharing your stories as well. And I just want to say thanks so much for your comments that you've put onto the website. Thank you for the five-star reviews I've been having on iTunes. It makes such a difference and um, I really, really appreciate it and really appreciate you for for tuning in for every episode and, and being part of this journey with me. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience that I've had with the music project that um, I set up with EWS School. You'd have heard a few episodes back that we were going to set something up, have a project with the cluster schools and just see how we could actually make music an integral part of the community and and, and how that was going to build itself up together. Um, So today I'm going to talk to you about my experiences about that. I have to say I've learnt things that I wasn't expecting to learn. We've done a project we've managed to get some schools together and um and pull everybody together to actually have a fantastic event um and this is just going to be a little bit about what my thoughts are where it's going to go for the future and some real big takeaways which i hope will actually really help you as teachers so the first thing to say is that um the cluster schools that were around here um there were eight in total um and i went to a cluster meeting and spoke to the heads and explain what it was that we were trying to do the fact that we were trying to get children together to have an experience they might not be able to get in their school we wanted to create an ensemble of children from different schools and just give them an opportunity which was out of their own comfort zone out of their normal school environment take them to the secondary school so they could really feel what the transition was like um, and, and really enjoy that kind of experience And the first thing that I found, which I wasn't expecting, having been a parent um, within this community for a long time, was the first problem we actually came up against was the fact that the schools wanted to know how they were going to get the children from their primary schools to the secondary school. Um, And this, I have to say, really caught me by surprise because of all the years that I've been involved, um, the school or the parents have taken the children to the secondary school for all manner of sporting events and leadership events over that time. Um, and there are quite a lot of schools that said they wouldn't be able to take part in this, the secondary school or, or they needed extra support to get the people there. So that was quite an interesting thing for me because I was really just expecting that to have taken care of itself based on all the other events that had happened there. So I'm not quite sure, still not quite sure, why music had a slightly different take on that sort of thing. Um, but I have to say I was really thankful for... Um, one of the schools who has a minibus that was able to do all lots, all manner of picking up and sorting out, and w- without them, it was um, it really wouldn't have happened. So, a big thanks to the, um, to that school and also um, to EWS who actually had a minibus that helped out to get people there. Another thing I wasn't expecting, bearing in mind this was an absolute free event for all, all the schools, was that of the eight schools that were represented at the meeting. Um, when we started to email around and say what the event was going to be all about, only three in the end decided to take part. Um, and of the other schools, some of them didn't reply at all or make any contact. Um, and a couple of others did get in contact to say they were really interested to see what was going to happen, but not able to take take part this time, which which and I really appreciate their, their feedback and, 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 and the support they gave, um, even though they couldn't attend. That was fantastic. So the first thing that I learned was that the old-fashioned kind of cluster doesn't really exist anymore. Um, not that not many years ago, the cluster was literally the local group of feeder schools going into a secondary school. But it does seem now that because of federations, because of foundations, of lots of schools linking up in different ways, um, schools are actually wanting to work just within their 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 cluster but within their foundation or within their federation, not necessarily as a feeder school into a secondary school unless they happen to be linked in some way or another. And I hadn't realised that what a big difference that makes because it really changes their whole focus. And the other thing that I came across was the fact that every school really are having to look after themselves. They want to be individual. They want to stand out because I guess they're attracting pupils or they need to attract pupils on their own merit. Um, And so 
because music is more of a collaboration there's no there's no kind of winner um lots of the sporting events the lots of the schools i think like to turn up because they can show how great their sports teams are whatever that happens to be but in this it's just about collaboration it's about giving their children an experience and i think that actually made a bit of a difference is the fact that that's a slightly different mindset and that kind of collaboration is something which you can't really quantify in the same way as you can as we won 3 nil at a football event. So that, that was an interesting takeaway for me. Another big takeaway was communication. Um, we were as clear as we thought we possibly could be about what the event was going to be. It was going to be an orchestral meetup. It was for orchestral instruments, and we listed the instruments that were actually able to take part based on the room that we had and the organisation we had and the setup that we had. There were some schools that actually either didn't read the information or didn't take it on board. Um, And so we had people turning up to the event expecting to play instruments that we weren't expecting them to do. In this particular case, it was a keyboard. So that was a bit of a problem for us because we needed to be able to obviously let the children feel like they were welcome because we wanted everyone to be welcome. But at the same time, we, the reason the keyboards weren't actually going to be part of this particular event is because it then requires all the electronics and stuff to go with it. And that's a, that was a bit of an issue for us, actually. And we were quite clear that this particular event wasn't going to include keyboards as such. And I just felt what this meant was it was a little bit like sending people to a sporting event, but for the wrong sport. So you wouldn't send someone along to play golf if it was a football event. So yes, it's sport, or, or in this case, yes, it was a music event. But actually, the guidelines and the what was required was quite clear. And I'm not quite sure whether that was a, a mix-up in communication from our end or them not reading all the information properly but it did cause us a little bit of a problem and um and that was a really interesting takeaway about just how thorough you need to be and how much second one second guessing and also two and three and four times checking over exactly what's going to happen the other hard thing about the checking is the fact that a lot of people did it last minute we had quite strict timelines about when things were going to happen so that we could control what was happening and also get the music together not all the schools were able to do that and keep up with that timeline so a lot of it was last minute a lot of it we were finding information later on so we were having to sort of do a lot of things on the hoof um that makes it difficult for us and it means that the actual event that we can create is much harder to organize much harder to keep going the real positives though that we did have a room full of many children um playing james bond and uh, frere jacker and and we did have a chance to have some sectional rehearsals and we split them split them into groups and hopefully gave them some some new skills and 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 some understanding about playing in an ensemble which they won't necessarily have done all of them in, in their individual school so i think that was a really good thing to be able to do as well as bringing everybody together to actually have our sort of final um feeling of what it's like to be in a large ensemble playing together But you really know these things are worthwhile when you have the children come up to you at the end saying what a fantastic time they've had, what a really, really exciting time they've had. And then also, and also separately, I had a parent come up to me to say that their children had done an impromptu concert and was so enthusiastic about what they'd done during the afternoon. And and she sort of was really grateful for that. And I thought that's the reason we did it was to motivate some children, to inspire them and then to be able to hopefully give them the opportunity for this to grow and various events that we were hoping to plan as as time goes on. So the second half of the day was um, a CPD event that we had offered to all the members of staff, many of the schools that wanted to take part, to, to give an idea of how you get music going in school, how you can support with limited budget um, and just get the idea of some basic singing things happening, some basic rhythm games that we thought would be really supportive for them. Um, the slightly disappointing thing from that was that we only had one school represented in that particular scenario Um, and while we thought that we'd have a much more take up of that what we were grateful for is the fact this school was really really keen to find out as much as they possibly could and one of the members of staff I think was a little bit worried about what would be involved how do you deliver music which is exactly the reason we wanted to put it on Um, and having spent our hour talking her through these things and showing her some of the games and some of the resources that we had she really felt like she could go away and do that within her class and I think that was really key it was a really a supportive thing to do and I think something which is a really good takeaway that we just managed to demystify some of these initial steps of what doing music in a primary school classroom looks like and that was 
was that was the real aim. And even if it was only one teacher that we made a difference with, that teacher then is able to give that on to her pupils, and that's a that's a real win for us. And this particular school, um, we're really keen on the idea of working together on other projects as well. So I have also since been in and delivered a Samba project for them. I went in and spent a morning with their year sixes and we literally started with some rhythm games and worked all the way up through to creating our own little Samba piece of music with some great structure, some dynamics, um, bringing all the authentic instruments in and, and showing them how to play them and layering all these things up like a big musical sandwich as I do um, to create a fantastic sort of final performance and, and that was really great fun and I think it really just shows what is achievable even in the space of an hour and a half that I think we were there and just getting that sense that you are musicians from the moment that you start and and you really can just start igniting from any point no matter what experience they've got in the past and be a musician from this moment onwards so while the take-up was less than I hoped um, and the landscape of of what I thought we were going to produce in these types of projects was different because of the as I said the makeup of the schools and, and the way all the schools are interlinked now is very different I'm not quite sure where the future lies um some of the schools that took part I think maybe took part because they felt they needed to and they had to because they couldn't be seen not to take part. Um, there were some of these schools that obviously didn't want to take part at all and never got in contact and others that, as I said, I think we're going to just see what happened or weren't able to take part this time. But the thing that I found is the person that was really pushing the whole thing was the fact that how much time these things take to bring together. I spent hours and hours and hours helping to basically pull the thing together set it up I have meetings with lots of different people um, um, all of which I wanted to do because I wanted to give you the listeners the the opportunity to hear what can be done what can be achieved it was that kind of I was taking my local environment and wanted to show you what was possible and so from that point of view I hope I've been able to say, look, just with a bit of creativity, you can pull something off. You can put a project together. And that's really exciting. I had the children that really came to me and really loved it. I had the parents coming to say what a fantastic event it was. And, and as I said, their little impromptu concert. That's the really big things. That's what I really, really enjoyed. The, the schools that did take part seemed very positive about what everyone had um, achieved and what they got out of it. So that was a really great positive as well. The thing for me is the fact that where does it go from here? How are we going to produce more and more and more of these things? And actually, is it even possible to do even more of these things? It has to come from the school. I was, I was the person that kind of just thought this is a great opportunity. And, and I, I knew the secondary school really, really wanted to improve its music, improve its relationships with some of the schools and get the whole feed of schools coming in and experiencing what it's like to be part of the secondary school. But it was really me that was leading it. And I think that for the school may well be a problem um, because it takes so much time to do that. It really needs to come from the school. And while we were working in collaboration, it was really great. And I had a, a really great time organising it with everybody. But I'm not wholeheartedly sure that the senior management within the school is as supportive either of me to do it on their behalf or exactly what we were trying to do. I'm not quite sure whether it's got a long-term future if I was able to take a step back and see it overall, um, will the school be pushing it forward? Will they have the facilities? Will they have the time and the inclination to create a new project with me supporting rather than me trying to say, look what it can be done. Look what we can do. Look what I can show you how it works. And that was a really interesting thing for me because I've been telling you in previous podcasts about how your community isn't just your local area. And I think that's what I've really found with this event, is the fact that I was trying to show people that I knew this is how it could be. But actually, a lot of them didn't want to know. They didn't want to see what how it could be because they work in a different way, and that's absolutely fine. So maybe the tribe that you're looking for, maybe the people that you're looking to work for, are actually not in your local community. So if you think back to the um, interview that I had with um, Friday Afternoons, the singing project that I shared with you from the Manchester Expo, um, you can actually take part, get their free resources, you can do concerts, you can upload things to their resources, um, and they could be anywhere in the world, and certainly anywhere in the UK. You can share these things, you can find people around within that organisation to share events with, and they're like-minded people that are already wanting to do the sorts of things that you are. 
the same sort of thing as when I chatted to Kelly Long back in season one. We were talking about having your tribe as an online tribe, you know, people that you communicate with on Facebook, people you communicate with online and share ideas, share your resources and actually really find people that ignite the passion within you and show you the way you want to go and vice versa, you showing them the way. It's not necessarily with the teacher in your school. It's not necessarily with the school next door to you. Actually, maybe it's a bit further afield than that. And maybe that's the way the world's working now. You know, maybe it's about finding the people that you need to come with you rather than showing people how it can be a different way, which I think was kind of where I was coming from, which I'm not sure is a really great way of doing it. Actually, yes, we showed what could be done. We got some children to have a fantastic experience but I'm not sure that it was necessarily, whether it's got the longevity that it needs, whether everybody is on board, whether the whole collaboration is really going to have the strength and depth that it needs from a senior management of the secondary school to really push that forward. Um, and that I find a little bit sad, but I think that probably is the reality. And I'm just thinking, with the amount of time and effort it took to get what we managed to achieve, what's the future of that? The amount of time it takes me to do that and create these things is time that I'm not able to put directly into helping you. It's time that I'm not able to create the resources that I've been wanting to do that I've put slightly on hold to show you how I can create this event to show you what is possible. And actually, I think maybe I was slightly misguided and maybe slightly fooling myself because actually that's what I need to do. I need to support you because you're here with me week in, week out, following these journeys and actually that's what I want to do. I want to support you in the things that I can do. I want you, the people that want to be part of what it is that we have to offer to come along with me and actually join, to join our tribe, to be able to take part in things. And, and maybe the idea is setting up a project or a concert or something like that in the future, which is purely an education on fire project where you can be anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world maybe if we can set something up over the internet it would be a fantastic thing to do. And that's really lighting my fire because I think we can join together with people that that are like-minded that really want to achieve something in a way that not necessarily people in your local area are actually doing so that's a really important thing for me and something which I really do need to think about is where I spend my time and also for you where do you spend your time what is it that you want to what is it you want to deliver but also what do you want to get out of it and what's your overall objective you know I managed to get some children enthused and loving the music that they did and that was the most important thing for me but I managed to touch a few children and that's incredibly important but I think through the podcast and the fact that I have the opportunity to speak to people at the moment we're in 55 countries around the world and actually creating something which can affect many many more people actually is probably a much better use of my time I can actually affect more people and while every single person I affect is really important even if it's on a small level there's only so much to go around there's only so much energy that you have there's only so much chance you have to make a difference and really affect the people around you so as a teacher I mean how much time do you do you put into some of the things that you actually create? You know, are you up, you know, till the early hours of the morning on a regular basis? Are you really pushing yourself to the to the nth degree to create some fantastic things for your students, which is absolutely phenomenal? But what's that doing to you? How is that creating your life? How does that affect your home life? How does it affect your energy levels and your ability to sustain that over a long period of time? My experience here is that it was a fantastic event, but it took an awful lot of energy it took an awful lot of time and it did take its toll a little bit on other projects that I had and and so like I said some of the resources that I want to create for you the time and effort I can put into the podcast and generate some things for you all around the world and I think that's a really important balance it's a really important question to to ask yourself what is it that I'm trying to do how am I trying to achieve it and what is it costing me And I think you have to put all that down and really weigh up. Is it really worth it? Or more probably a better way of looking at it is, is this the best way of spending my time? Can I do it a more efficient way? Can I think about it in a different way? Am I able to maybe slightly adapt what I'm trying to do, which takes less time and maybe less energy? That means I can actually produce more things in in a more productive way. And I think that really is a key takeaway for me is, What is it that actually I can achieve? Because actually, 
going down the same route I think would take an incredible amount of energy and I really get the sense that not all the schools in the community are wanting it and that's absolutely fine because I was saying look what you can do in asking them to sit to, to, to join me with that but actually I'm much better off to actually produce something which I know is fantastic that I want people to join if they happen to be in the local community in the, my local environment they can join me anyway it doesn't make any difference but it doesn't have to be interlinked directly me showing it has to be this through this particular school or that particular school I can actually just be the beacon I can set an event up draw people from all over the place to do that and then I'm, I'm not bound them by other people's resources and other people's restrictions um, and and actually I'm quite excited about that and I think actually I've got some great ideas that I want to do that I think will will, will help you you know no matter where you are you can actually come join some of our events and actually once you have the resources that you can get off the website we'll actually be able to pull these things together and I hopefully be able to create some live events uh, around around the UK, certainly specifically to begin with, but I'd like to be able to do it around the world. I'd like to think of the, the opportunity that anything that we can create, we can actually model and put anywhere because everyone that you, every one of you that's listening can actually be part of what it is that we're trying to create. And it's all of us together. That's the exciting event because we're already thinking about these things. We're already excited about it. We're already wanting to share our experiences get our students together to actually get the best possible experience for them, the best learning environment in the best possible way. So on a real practical level, um, I'm going to try and demonstrate exactly what I mean by this. So now that the event is over and um, and I've got much more time um, back and a lot less to, to organise, um, as I said, I'm really pleased we did it. I'm really pleased that we managed to affect the children there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these resources that um, I have that I've used in the past from my days of running Rhythmically Speaking um, and put some of the rhythm games, put some of the samba related stuff that I did in one of the primary schools that, that, that I went in and, and delivered for them. Um, and they're going to be on my blog post. There is a, there's a, a selection of 12 videos um, which have been online before, which I'm just going to repurpose and actually put um, into the blog post that you'll be able to see exactly the sort of thing that I've been doing and, and how you put these things together. Um, and that way, yes, I'm affecting change and I'm showing you what to do, but not just the people in my local community, but anyone that listens to the podcast and also anyone that's listening to the podcast now, but also people that come and listen to it in the future. It's always going to be there so people can actually take on board what it is, use what they want to use, get in contact and have this sort of two-way conversation if they want to know anything more. I can really help with that. Um, and, and I really hope that helps. And I think in terms of like we said about using our energy, using our focus, having direction, this way I can help more people. It won't stop me going into my local community to, to, to benefit and, and support those that want it. I'm always here for that. But what I'm not trying to do is to is to try and change the people that don't want it. And I think that's the most important thing is that rather than just saying, look, this is how it could be. You should be doing it differently. I'm just going to be using a beacon, just a guiding light of I know this works. I know this sort of thing is fantastic. If you want it, it's here. I'm here to support you. If you don't, then that's absolutely fine. But what I'm going to focus on is those people that do want it, those people that want the support, those people that are really happy to come along and enjoy the ride with me and, and and that's my focus that's my that's my gift that's the sort of thing I want to do for you and and I hope with all of those insights the sort of thing that you can maybe see from your classroom whether it's music or or whether it's something else within your classroom how are you spending your time how are you spending your energy who are you working with are you working with people that are zapping your energy are you working with people that are infusing you are they within your school are they maybe in another school or is it someone that you're connecting with online and where are you getting your ideas from and um just really i'm really interested to hear about these things you know where do you get that inspiration who are you supporting who's supporting you and and the landscape is changing. It's not just about your school. It's not about what was the old cluster. It's not even necessarily about the, the new foundations and the new academy chains. It's actually about you as an individual and where it takes you and what you're finding and where you're getting your support. So as I said, over the next few weeks, I'm going to post the videos of my rhythm games um, and the, the samba related things. Um, and 
do watch those let, let me know what you think and um, if you want more resources than that please sign up to the newsletter if you go to educationonfire.com sign up to the newsletter and I'm going to have more and more resources there to, to give you more information regular exclusive things that I can actually really help you with and and just build up your portfolio of things in music as we're currently in our music in the art season but more importantly, as we start to change into different seasons, different focuses, there's going to be more and more things that I'm going to be able to support you with and, and give you. So, um, yeah, get get on board and, and join us in, in, in that tribe of, of education, which is about the future, education, which is about how to inspire children, about topics and, and um, learning environments which are supportive for children, not just about rote learning, actually taking action, being involved in practical things and there are so many examples of these things out there now and it, I really am convinced that this is this is the way forward and, and it really is just a question of, of working with each other supporting each other and coming together and I think it's a bright future for all of those people that are going to be working in that way so thanks very much for listening as I said 50 episodes I'm absolutely thrilled that we're going and thriving and growing week on week month on month please Tell anybody that you know who might be interested in this podcast, you think might get something out of it. I'd really appreciate that. And I look forward to sharing the rest of the music season with you with some fantastic guests and interviews that are coming up. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.